Now, in order to find the probability mass function for x here, um, we're quickly going to see that we're going to need to recall our counting techniques that we learned back in section one. Um, in this case, we are interested in sampling four bulbs from a crate of 50 bulbs and looking at the number of bulbs that we've selected that are defective. Well, if we're only sampling four bulbs, we could have zero that are defective, one, two, three, or four. We can have no more than the number that we've actually selected. So what we need to do in order to find the PMF is we need to find the probability that x is zero, the probability that x is one, out to the probability that x is 4. If we can find all of those probabilities, then we've defined the probability mass function. So let's jump right in and find the probability that x is 0. Well, if you think about the number of ways in which we can select um, any four bulbs, there are 50 bulbs in the crate, and we're interested in choosing any four. So there are 50 choose four ways of selecting four bulbs. Now if we're interested in finding zero defective bulbs, well there are five defective bulbs and we want to choose zero of them. And of the 45 non-defective bulbs that must be in the crate, we're interested in choosing all four of them. Okay, now let's find the probability that x is 1. Well, again, there are 50 choose four ways of choosing four bulbs. And of the five defective bulbs that are in the crate, we're interested in choosing one of them. And that leaves us with, of the 45 non-defective, we want to choose three. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. The probability x is two. Maybe we'll see a pattern after this, if you haven't already seen it. Um, again, we have 50 choose four ways of choosing four bulbs. And we have five defective bulbs, and we want to choose two of them this time, because we're looking for the probability that x is two. And then of the 45 non-defective bulbs, that means that we need to choose two of those in order to fill out our sample of four. Okay. So by now, um, I'm going to argue that we can see a pattern here that will allow us to write the probability mass function in the form of a general formula. f of x is the probability that x equals x, I claim that it equals uh, let's see here, it's always 5, and then when x is 0, it's 0, and when x is 1, it's 1, when x is 2, it's 2, so it's going to be 5 choose x, and then it's 45 choose, well we're always sampling, in this case if you're looking for the probability x is 0, it's 4, when x is 1, it's 3, and when x is 2, it's 2, so it's 4 minus x divided by, in the denominator, it's always 50 choose 4. <clears throat> and that it holds for x is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now note that a probability mass function is not a probability mass function unless you specifically specify the support. And then, so down here we'll say this is, the probability is 0 otherwise. So what we've done here is we've used our counting techniques to find the probabilities for specific values and then said, aha, here's a general formula for it. Rather than having to recreate those counts every time, we can just use this formula. And in this case, this kind of a distribution has a special name that's called the hypergeometric distribution.